Hey y'all, it's me Hetty, and today I'm going to share with you when I'm doing a whole lot of bell peppers. And as a matter of fact, these are 17 bell peppers. Uh, I cut them up yesterday. It was way too late to start this crock pot because I only go for a few hours tops. And I want to share with you how, you know, we did the caramelized onions in the crock pot. So that gives you freedom to be multitasking. And look, let me tell you how I do it. I'll sit down and I listen to podcasts or music and stuff like that. I sit down to chop. With my health and my back the way it is, I can't just stand for hours and hours at the counter anymore. That's just the way it is currently. And I don't want another back surgery, which is where I'm headed. And believe me, I'm gonna put that off as long as I can. It's giving me bad trouble though. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about these. Uh, these are going to be like sauteed bell peppers. You will be getting them to your liking. So you'll have to time it with your crock pot and your preference from how you like, say if you were going to saute your bell peppers, how soft do you want them, okay? Uh, I like mine to still have a little oomph with them because they're going to cook in whatever I put them in. All right, so look, I've got so many, I'm starting out with a stick of butter. That's easy. I've got this on high for now. And as always, this part doesn't change. I'm coming in with a drizzle. That's probably barely about a teaspoon and a half tops. And I only put in that much because of the amount of my bell peppers. And as you know, with the crock pot, that's what's so wonderful is you can just throw it in and just check it a lot less than if you're cooking on the stove. And... Boom. So I put these guys in. I don't even need to really store them right now. Why? Because I got to wait for the butter and the oil to get going anyway. So I'll come back in here in about 30 minutes since this is on high and that butter will have, have had a chance to, if I can speak today, it will have had a chance to melt. So I could have cubed it up and done that. Why? Extra work for nothing. So anyway, for now, look. I'll come back in 30 minutes when I'm going to stir it, okay? I'll see you then. Okay, we're back to do an update. In all honesty, it's been more like, I don't know, 40, 45-ish minutes. Less than 45. But it, it won't hurt it a bit. I've just been doing so many other things. And now I'm coming back. And, and as y'all can see, look, I want you to look down in here. They're starting to release some of their water. And if you can see... The butter's all melted, so that's why I'm giving it a really good stir. They're still very raw. I'll pick up one if it's not too hot. Show you. They're still very raw. They're not where we need them to be. And knowing they're going to release a lot of their water, I'm not even going to come touch them again for at least another 45 minutes or an hour. I'll, I'll give you my time when I come back for another update but y'all I cannot reiterate to you enough it is so worth it to do this and the reason I know it's 17 bell peppers I want to explain to you why I always give you the count because if I'm choosing to when I separate them out to freeze them so then I can pull them out for meals depending on the size of your family do you always use two bell peppers do you always use one do you just use a half? It all depends. And then I, I, I've shown y'all before, I get those little snack bags. And that's how I divide them up. How I'm going to use them. And for me, I always do one bell pepper. And sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. I might end up with 15 bags. Oh well, it's close. And these were not huge bell peppers too. So I'm not as concerned to get 16 or 17 bags out of it. I'll be happy if I end up with, say, I don't know, 12 to 14 bags. Because, you know, I don't know if you're having this trouble in uh, your area, but I hadn't found a nice, pretty bell pepper in ages. I have bad spots on them. You know, they're rough. I'm washing them extra well because they seem to be very dirty. Stuff like that. They're just not looking good. But I still had to have bell pepper. So, there were some in the 17 bell peppers. I had to cut out whole sections. So, it just depends. 
you know about you'll be able to eyeball it after these are cooked and cooled down we'll talk about that you're just going to eyeball it about you know what you use when you're cooking with bell pepper you know how much you use already anyway i'm rambling that's it let's go back on boom i'll see y'all in 45 minutes or an hour or something like that okay it's been about another 50-ish minutes in between say 50 and 55 I'm coming in, we'll give it another stir. Always give them a nice stir. See that see this? They've really released their water now. And these were fresh bell peppers, not frozen. Although there's been many times I chopped them up and prepped them shoved them in the freezer, and then later used the crock pot on them. So it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just if they're frozen, they are going to have a little more water. Now, just got a little fork. I'm going to come in and see if they're where I want them. Okay. For me, this is where I want them. I want that they're about 85% where you'd want them in a cooked dish. So they've got a little leeway. And so I'm gonna cut my crock pot off, let them cool down, and then we'll go to the next step because this is where I want them. They're getting done, not quite done. And that way, when I put them in, if I'm making spaghetti sauce, chili, whatever I'm making, skillet supper, they're gonna finish off in that dish and not be mush and overdone, all right? So when these have cooled down, I will bring you back. Alrighty, as you can see, I, I, they, these have cooled down and off camera, I simply just put a colander into a bowl because there is some liquid uh, still coming out. I use a slotted spoon to get them out of the crock pot because if I was in a skillet, see the sauteing process, their water would be absorbed and, and evaporate. but in a crock pot heating differently it leaves that liquid in there so I don't want that so for this I use sandwich bags and I always always here's a trick for you when you fill up a ziplock bag always always I don't care if it's a snack bag a quart bag sandwich bag like this or a gallon bag fold down the top and then you don't get food all smeared on the outside or the zipper part. All right, now I usually just fold it over twice. And for me, now you know how much bell pepper you use. And this is just an up to you thing. But for my family, about half a cup equals, half a cup of this equals about one bell pepper, medium size. And so I always know that for my cooking, I'm always going to want a cup. You see that? And I always have the option to just use half of that bag. And I'd rather do that than have a bunch of tidy bags and then be using two or three at a time, depending on what I'm making. If I'm making a huge pot, of course, I want to use more than that. And then I just simply, since I folded that down, I don't have a mess, and I unroll it. and then I zip it about two-thirds of the way. I lay it flat. Can you use vacuum seal? Of course you can. I don't make up so much that I'm gonna not be able to use it before they get freezer burn or anything. So keep that in mind when you decide how many you wanna make. But this is so easy to do. You know, if you just use half a cup of bell pepper then of course you won't need to do that many and then you can use them up and I just I do it again uh, sometimes these last me six weeks sometimes they last me a month it just depends on the time of the year and what I'm making so anyways you can see I rolled the air out of that and I'm just gonna tuck it like this because remember I'm gonna freeze these and then I roll it up like that and I set it to the side and I continue on doing that until they're all gone so let me do that off camera, and then I'll bring you back. We'll see how many we got. Okay, now as you can see, 
See, there's some of the liquid. Now, what I do is I use a slotted spoon to get them out of the crock pot. And that leaves a lot of liquid behind. And then I just let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes in a colander, which is what I've done. And then you see, I still got yet more liquid. I don't want this to drip on the table, but, and it did anyway. So anyway, look at this. It couldn't have been more perfect. What did I tell you? I had 16 or 17 bell peppers. And by the time I cut a couple of little uh, small bat areas off a couple of them, it worked great. And I told you, I put a cup in mine because I want it to be an average. Because for my family, I know I use an average of two bell peppers per meal. If I it turn out I only need one bell pepper, like maybe I'm just making omelets or something, these are still easy to take out. You can take out half of it before you defrost it or anything, it will come apart. Just kind of work it back and forth. It'll be like a little hunk, put it on a saucer, nuke it for 15 seconds, and it'll be loose enough to utilize. So that's all I do, and it's easier for me. Now, of course, if you're a smaller family, you know, you can use snack bags and do the same thing. Y'all seen me use snack bags before, but about half a cup of cooked bell pepper that done this way that I've done them, a half a cup is about one bell pepper. That's not exact, folks. Depends on if you got big, humongous bell peppers or little bitty, as they call them around here, choppers. The little tiny kind, and it seems like that's all I can find now. Now, I know I'm just inserting this in the middle of the end of the video, but I want to show you how I put them all in here. But I also take a minute, I also zip it about two-thirds of the way, and I just roll out as much air as I can out of it as well. And then... Like I said, I use mine quick enough. Even if I didn't date it, I'd be fine. But I also just take a... I don't bother with that thing. It wipes right off. I've, I've had stuff that was supposed to be permanent marker wipe off of here. So I just write it here. I'll put the date right there, see? If I need to. But in this case, I guess I can come back and look at the footage shot for this video. <laughs> anyway, I just... I'm shutting up. Back to the end of the video. I probably got easily 8 to 12 mils, depending on what I'm making, 8 to 12 mils out of this. Now you think about me reaching in here, say you're going to use a whole bag, say there's just one bell pepper in there, I need a bell pepper. Well, we're going to talk about this coming up, but all I do is nuke this, dump it in my pot, and I'm ready to go. Same thing with the caramelized onions and the oven roasted garlic. I'm going to convert y'all, I'm telling you. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, I've gotten to where I'm doing more. Uh, I'm utilizing the crock pot more. I'm utilizing different methods. Now, if I'm already in the kitchen, I'm still going to do them on the stove. But this enables me, it's not exactly set it and forget it, but it's not you having to stir it every four or five minutes. Or even more often than that if you have your heat up too high, which is not good. All right, uh, that's it. I love y'all, and I'll see you in the next video.